I haven't been making much videos lately, and uh, the sole reason for that is this. I got myself a van. Uh, the story is this. Uh, about a month ago or so, uh, I figured I'd grown a bit weary of my 1990 Nissan D21 pickup truck, which was uh, basically a major bother during the entire time I owned it, since it was a huge 4x4, uh, which I only used on the road. So I put it out in the paper and uh, offered to trade it for a van. And uh, very luckily, for me at least, uh, a farmer called me and said he needed a proper 4x4 in order to drive around in the forest. And he had a 1999 uh, Nissan uh, Serena or Vanette cargo that he wanted to trade for it. Now, uh, <laughs> I was a bit uh, wary doing this trade because if you look up any review or any opinion piece about the Nissan Serena or the Nissan Vanette, uh, you're going to find out two things. Number one is that this seems to be the slowest vehicle basically manufactured during all of the 1990s. Uh, the 0 to 100 time, kilometers per hour, specified for this vehicle is 27.8 seconds. Now that was made by I believe Car and Driver magazine. I think it's a bit uh, uh, bit worse than it actually is. It does feel usably fast but it certainly isn't a very quick vehicle. And the second thing you'll find out is that uh, these were very cheap and generally nasty. However this is uh, a one of the later models. I think they only made these up to 2002 and uh, they seem, much to my surprise, to have uh, gotten rid of quite a few of the baby problems with them. And uh, all in all, I'm very happy with this uh, vehicle. It's just been a pleasure spending time around it. Now, one of the main arguments I had in favour of doing this trade is the odometer. My truck uh, had... 237,000 kilometers on it, which is, you know, I don't know how many miles, but this one's got 151,000. I've driven it about 1,000 by now, it was 150 something when I got it. Uh, that's less than 100,000 miles, and certainly you cannot say no to a trade. Uh, to trade a vehicle that's 10 years newer and has got less on the clock for a vehicle that's 10 years older and uh, has, you know, 80, 90 thousand kilometers more on the clock. In a way, that's not to say this thing was in perfect shape. Uh, I've been basically working <laughs> full-time days cleaning this thing up since it was used by a farmer and as such it has seen some fairly dirty use. Uh, this entire back cargo area and uh, the cab as well uh, basically smelled like a p pig's tie. So I, I must be getting up to the tens of hours I've spent just taking the interior out and uh, cleaning it very, very thoroughly. Uh, I've even had the seats out, ripped the covers off, uh, semi destroying them in the process and uh, running them through the washing machine. And I assure you what came out what came out in that rinse water wasn't pretty. It also had a bit of a tear in the seat here which I very hiply <laughs> patched up with a sewing machine and some jeans. Uh, genuine old pants. Anyway, what else has been done? I've uh, done... I am doing a full service on this thing. Uh, I have uh, changed the oil I, oil I first thing I did was take it through a washer and I found a water leak which I patched up over here. It's been leaking for quite some time so we've got some rust beginning there but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. The last couple of days I've been working on the instrument cluster. This thing had a really bad squeak to it but I had to take it out and replace a few bulbs anyway which is a fellow major project in this but I took the time to both wash this thing properly and to get rid of a squeak it would just go eh, eh, eh. as soon as you touch this I got up to speed. I've also installed uh, a sand deadening material all over 
the inside of it. They both in the cargo area, although not inside of these walls and in the cab doors because the road noise in this thing was rather horrid. If you can imagine that, it's way worse than your average car. Which is a bit uh, weird because uh, in general they've done a very good job soundproofing everything in this thing. Uh, they're soundproofing uh, all over, uh, all under the uh, fluffy carpet thingy. And the, the dash is very dead, the uh, roof's got some, some give to it, but it's a generally a very, uh, very well dampened car. Now, the reason for for this <laughs> is probably the fact that you can see it's got some rather weird seats, and that's because we've got the engine sitting right on <laughs> right underneath the uh, seats, and we might g give it a go at popping the actual hood. If we pop the you know, frunk, it's just going to show you a spare tire. So let's go through the procedure. You start by removing this centerpiece here. Can't have the handbrake on. There you go. That goes out. This has also been very thoroughly washed. First thing to be cleaned since it, it's so very easy to get off. Second step, undo these. Undo these. Here you can see some of the very nice same deadening material. Well, there's what's stuck on the metal as well. I've, I've uh, taken the time to actually adjust these uh, hood tensioner clips because these were just basically flat in the breeze and all the closing force was put, being put down by this one, which is uh, still quite a bit sturdier than the other one. Step three. Or well, you want to fold down the divider there to just slide the seat all the way forward, tilt it, and now this should come up. There. And there we go. Uh, access to 50% of the engine. Arr. Now this thing is a diesel. It's a 2.3 litre naturally aspirated diesel engine of a rather ancient heritage. Uh, I'm not entirely certain about anything about this. It seems to be one of these uh, fairly Eastern European specials that they love to do in these commercial vehicles. It's an Nissan LD23 engine which uh, doesn't really seem to exist anywhere. Uh, it's got uh, a 2.3 litre making about 70 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque and 2400 rpm I think but it's basically unknown I've asked the dealership for a manual for it because you can't find it anywhere anyway the work I've done on the engine changed uh, the fuel filter was pissing diesel everywhere it's the end of the fuel filter has got a water indicator thingy and that sits below <laughs> the fuel tank so it would siphon out the fuel tank whenever it was sitting it's probably I mean during the course of this old filter's life it probably siphoned out at least half a tank because it was coming out fast it was dripping and also replaced a couple of diesel return lines got a couple more to go because this were pissing diesel as well still has some issues it's uh, the two of the injectors seem to be leaking very slightly at the seat. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. I'm probably going to take all this stuff apart and clean it out properly, but I'm going to wait until I get the manual for it to use so that I've got proper torque specs and stuff like that. All in all, this entire engine compartment is very dusty and horrible. It's certainly lived a very uh, agricultural life. Uh, no rust though, as is common for vehicles uh, that have lived their entire lives on this island on which I reside. Nicely enough, compared to my truck, I'm the third owner 
of his vehicle. The trial car was probably the tenth or so. And that's always a good sign. The first owner kept very good records of everything that went on with its vehicle. Second owner, the farmer guy, and not too much, but he said he had actually changed the cam belt, it sadly is a belt, about five years ago. So I'm going to do the belt in short, in due time. I've put one in order. Uh, again, hoping I guess, can get my hands on a manual for it because I wouldn't want to talk everything incorrectly and ruin my engine. Arrgh. Ah, can't hold that up much longer. Also, on the back of the seat, you can see the uh, people carry heritage or minivan heritage that this vehicle has uh, since these seats have these little pockets which just go up against the wall because the normal version, the Nissan Serena, which is a bit, uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, shorter, it's nowhere near as tall and doesn't have this silly hump there. It uh, has got, uh, I think it's nine seats or so. They were rather popular as taxis for a while around here. Dual sliding doors as well, which is a nice feature. And something you wouldn't believe, every single door on this vehicle has a light switch. <laughs> My truck only had a light switch for the driver's door. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, or possibly even six switches for the doors. And this light seems to have broken <laughs> just in time for that, or it's turned off. I've also uh, done a very quick project of adding a line input to the stereo here, which was, I was going to make a video about it, but I never bothered because I wanted to get it done very quickly. And this has to be one of the simplest uh, line-in hacky radios I've ever worked on, because what I've done to, the, to this radio is just, I've shoved a cassette in there, disabled the motor, it has no feedback on whether or not the tape is actually spinning, and uh, put a voltage divider in series with the line in input and feed that uh, straight to the uh, tape input, tape head input, which uh, works perfectly. Uh, but one very amusing part about that is that there seems to be some kind of Dolby thing going on in this thing, because there's basically a low-pass filter uh, on the entire uh, sound. So you get, uh, and it goes very low as well, so you get a huge boost, a ridiculous amount of boost uh, below 60 hertz, uh, and it just kind of rolls off about 3 decibels per octave or something above that. So this, even with these puny little stock uh, 5 and a qu quarter inch black print speakers, uh, this thing has <laughs> a ridiculous amount of bass, of course you can't play too loud or it'll just start clipping, but uh, it sounds very good. I, I'm not usually a fan of uh, bassy stuff, and generally bass controls and, and so forth on, you know, car stereos don't sound very good. They usually put a bass booster somewhere around 100 Hz, but this goes uh, way below that. And, uh, I don't know, I have the battery disconnected, so... Yeah, here's my sound settings. I've got the bass, which is a normal bass control, which is centered around 100 Hz, set to minus 6. And the treble control is supposed to be at plus 6. So, I'm eating away the frequencies around 100 Hz, but this bass control doesn't care about anything below 60 Hz or so. So then we have a nice sub bass <laughs> hit there, and the treble control is kind of low frequency, seems to be centered, it's very wide, but it seems to be centered around 10 kHz or so. So it compensates quite well for the uh, Dolby-ish drop-off in the uh, frequency response we've got, which just, ah, it's amazing. I don't have any music play right here with uh, copyright free music, so I can't quite show you. Uh, I've got a little fixes. 
glove box hinge was gone. This thing was just hanging down. Uh, I've been cleaning everything. I've been cleaning the tracks for the sliding doors. I've been cleaning the door hinges. I've adjusted the door closing mechanism, which was a bit glitchy, but they're perfect now. Like a new car. And I love the sound of a proper dampened door closing like that. Uh, very cheapo mirrors. Not even controlled but from the inside. Uh, I never had one of these work. Let's pop the hood and have a look at <laughs> what the stuff we can find in there. Certainly not an engine. But they have gone to some effort to make this thing actually fairly service friendly. Uh, I did this to the battery because the, uh, I got a battery with it. It's a 100 amp hour battery. Uh, but it had a capacity I tested it of about uh, 17 or so. And uh, yeah, when it's going to get cold in a few months, I, I don't quite trust an 18 amp hour battery. So I, I had one of these uh, identical ones sitting around, which I knew was good, to at uh, about 90. Uh, but with the wrong uh, pole orientation, and the cables wouldn't reach, I would have it with the poles coming towards me. So I just extended them with some copper bar. Uh, I've also done these struts on this thing. My first time ever doing that job, and I very obviously didn't kill myself. These uh, uh, rubber grommet thingies were entirely ruined, and uh, they had probably caused the shocks to go bad in a rather quick manner. And this, the ride on this thing was absolutely abhorrent with bad shocks. Uh, really, I changed shocks on my truck too, which was an independent front suspension truck, so it should make a fair amount of difference. Uh, uh, putting new, new shocks in it, but the difference in this vehicle is uh, giant. Uh, it it feels <laughs> entirely different. All of the horrible, uh, you know, grumble ra raid noise that just accumulates over time went straight away. I've also had to take the blower out in order to actually get at the strut mount because they're down there and down on for that bottle there. And that wasn't an easy task. However, I was going to take the fan out anyway because I wanted to clean out all this stuff and get the all of the horrible farm pigs type smelling stuff out of it and also lube up the motor. And the fan motor in this uh, vehicle is quite impressive, I must say, because uh, it's a brushed motor like every other car fan motor in a car of the era, but. Uh, if we turn it on, you can barely hear any motor noise at all. Now it got a bit better even after I lubed the bearings in it, but uh, all the noise you're getting is basically just uh, air turbulence. And I'm very impressed by that. I've never heard uh, a brushed DC motor run this silent before. Very good engineering on, uh, well, I, would say Nissan spot, but I think it's a Bosch motor. And I like the layout too, where they've just put the fan under the hood rather than under the glove box where it usually goes. Because, hey, the little turbulence no noise you get out of the fan blades and the little engine no or motor noise you get, hey, it's going to be outside of the vehicle. So, the actual sound you get out of the vents is just air moving around. No drama. Very, very nice. It still needs a bit of attention though. The clutch, I wish you could feel this. It's a bit, a bit weird. It has a lot of resistance going back up. I'm not entirely sure what's causing but I think I'm going to just try and swap the fluid and bleed the system, hoping that will clear some stuff up. I don't think the fluid's ever been changed in the clutch. But I don't know, I think it's been topped off sometime because it's over max there. Hmm. Something spooky going on. <laughs> also the tyres I got on this thing. Uh, I think most of them are from 1992. Um, that would be the rear tyres. And uh, it's got different tyres on both the front sides. It's got a Bridgestone on that side I think. And a yeah, Kelly something <laughs> on this side. Same dimension thankfully but yeah they're not the same tyres. And alignment's a bit iffy. But I'm going to change the some steering part because the right wheel has a very slight uh, 
apply to it. And I don't accept that thing, I want all my alignments to be perfect. What more? Uh, sadly, it's uh, the rear wa washer wiper on this car is one of those stupid things that share the reservoir up in the front. So, the previous owner was an old farmer, he'd never used that thing. So, I've had to go to a fair amount of effort to actually get any water to come out of these two here. The actual washers uh, worked fine as long as they replaced the wipers, but uh, yeah, these nozzles. <laughs> Uh, after about a few minutes of just pumping fluid through it, I got something to come out of that one. But uh, this one was very thoroughly shut up, so I had to actually push on the compressed air through it in order to get it to <laughs> finally clear up. But it worked, I didn't have to replace anything. Uh, I've also had the carpet out. I've cleaned it up as best as I could, but as you can see, it's far from perfect and it still smells a bit back here. Even after many, many hours of cleaning, it's insane how it smells like you know, general farming just catch on. Cab's pretty good on the smell part, though. Hmm. It's also got uh, uh, electronically adjustable headlights which don't work, there seems to be some weird ass problem with the electronic motors in there. They get signal, I've tried troubleshooting them but they just won't move. I think they might be mechanically seized. I have been on they've been trying to move but uh, after too many years of just being stuck they've just given up and the motors have blown. That's my guess because everything else seems to be in order and they do move if you force them to. But by hand. Hmm, so yeah, that's about it. That's my van. They certainly aren't uh, very beautiful. Uh, they do, however, this one at least, seems to get incredible gas mileage. Uh, I get about... The first run I did, which, uh, w which I replaced with fuel filter and basically poured away about a litre diesel, uh, I actually got eight and a half liters per 100 kilometers, and in money, since diesel is taxed uh, differently than petrol around here, it's a lot cheaper. It's about 140 euros per liter diesel and 175 euros per liter petrol. This thing costs about as much to run as my little Peugeot 205, which is just insane. And I'm going to try and have this be my daily run around driver since. Uh, yeah, I don't like driving a Peugeot. It's just too nice of a car to put wear on. And uh, there's not too much else to do before this thing will basically be restored to uh, mint condition. I still need to do the rear shocks. I need to change some rubber grommets and stuff in the suspension that are just going a bit uh, old with age, cracking. It's going to fail inspection in a few years due to that, but that's no biggie. I'm going to do them well before that since I'm anal about the things that got to do with uh, suspension and cleanliness. Hmm, I'll see. <laughs> A slightly amusing thing as the very 90s badge. I uh, don't like the look of those. They're just silly. But in order to accommodate the huge power of the 78 horsepower diesel, We've got a limited slip differential <laughs> in order to rip six kids. It does chirp the tyres for about uh, three seconds, unless you hold the brake. Mm, so yeah, I'll ramble on for wait, 25 minutes now. So thank you for watching. Cheerio. This is the reason I haven't been doing any videos. Just been working at super high pace. Also, final note about the seats. Since I'm a very short person, when I had them uh, out, I actually swapped the left and right cushions uh, on both the seat and uh, backrest in order to give the driver the much less worn out <laughs> seats. Uh, and I also uh, partly raised the driver's seat up a bit because you can't adjust that. Put it about a centimeter up by installing some washers underneath it. Uh, and I installed a pair of old pants underneath the pillow. 
I'm not going to be, to be able to see it and it's all covered up. But I've got a pair of old pants, not the ones that I took this, <laughs> this stuff from, that's another pair of pants. But there's a considerable amount of old pants installed into this van. Cheerio.